where there is hope for the? That's right. Praise God. Uh, Ezra 3 and 8, we're going to continue our sermon on the road to revival. I'm going to read the scripture again to keep us in context. Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, Jose, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all that were came on out of the captivity of Babylon unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites for twenty years old and upwards to set forth the work of the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We ask that you would continue to give us wisdom and knowledge of your will, that we might obey, be blessed, and be strong in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. That scripture I gave you is what we preached this morning. If you would go to 2 Chronicles chapter 29. We're going to go back to that portion of scripture next Sunday. Praise God. How did you find that? You're good. 2 Chronicles chapter 29. We're going to start in verse 1. Next week we're going to continue the road to revival in the context of Ezra, we'll start that again next week. But right now we're going to go on to Second Chronicles. And the word says, Hezekiah began to reign. You may, you may be seated. I already read our opening scripture. You can sit down. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old. And he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah and the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I want to hear that said about me when I get to heaven. That, that Pastor John Michael, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. You know what? I'm not always going to get approval from the church. Fortunately, so far we're, we're batting a thousand. We're doing pretty good. I have had only one person really ever express any frustration with the vision that I have. And they still said, but you know, I trust you. You're the pastor. I want to be able to be told, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not necessarily seeking your approval. I want you to enjoy coming to this church. I want you to love me. I want you to love my wife. I want you to love this church. But this church would be a lot more full if I sought the approval of people. I could sugarcoat things and, and water it down so that everybody would be comfortable and everybody would be happy and everybody would come and they could shout and dance and, and have a good old time and not have to be condemned or, or not have to be in a position of being corrected. But I would rather seek approval from God and tell you the truth and have people in here who want to love the Lord and want the truth taught straight without pulling punches and cutting corners. Now let me tell you why that's good for you and for me because number one, I'm going to be able to have the Lord say this to me. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. That doesn't mean I haven't made mistakes. Three years ago I fell on my face as a minister and it was public and it was ugly. And everybody knew about it. It was shameful. But I'm living proof that you can come up from anything. As long as you repent of your sins and commit your life to God. That God can restore you tenfold, hundredfold and take care of you. The be that's the blessing for me is that I can be restored and receive power and get re-grafted in to the kingdom of God. The good thing for you is that you don't get a dead dry church or watered down power or full of sin where you can't even go to heaven even though you go to church. You get to have the outpour of the Holy Ghost all over this place because of us teaching truth straight away without any turning of the left or to the right. We keep it straight. I want to hear that from him. 
he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Now verse 3 says, he in the first year of his reign in the first month opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. <clears throat> they were, well, why did they need to be repaired? Because they weren't being taken care of. They weren't being respected. People had turned from the face of the Lord and turn to idols and all kinds of things. And therefore the house of the Lord wasn't important anymore. It wasn't upkept anymore. And it needed to be repaired. And that's one of the first things that he did was begin to repair the house of the Lord. I made it a good th two, two years and two months, but I couldn't stand it anymore. Those kitchens and the kitchen and the bathrooms had to be done. Now we had a reason why we didn't get them fixed first. Because we were working in the ministry. But I could take it no longer. Because I want to have respect for the house of the Lord. I was convicted every time I went into those bathrooms. Man, this needs to be fixed. That is the attitude of someone who loves God. We've got to have respect for the house of the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 4 says that he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together in the East Street. Verse 5. And he said unto them, hear me. Ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves, sanctify the house of the Lord of God, your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of this holy place. What does that sound like to you? Oh, do we use that word again? You're having country fried pastor again, can you? Our thermostat doesn't work on that thing, so... We are having to just turn it off and we'll turn it back on if it gets cold. Don't worry. Uh, but it's quite... Is anybody freezing? We're good. You can have my jacket. You want it? I'm a gentleman. Okay. No, not that you got to do it in the back. Because that don't work. We're going to get that fixed. Bill, <laughs> put that on our list. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <sighs> We're talking about the road to revival. I'm going to tell you what that road is. We talked about it earlier. That we are, we're not just about repentance for ourselves, but it's repentance for our mission, for our service, so that we can have God. Listen, I want everybody in here to look at your back. Look at your back. You got your shoulder. Look at your back. No, sister, that's your shoulder. Look at your back. You can't see, yeah, you need a mirror. You can't see your back, can you? So if you, <laughs> Brother Gary took a picture with his phone. There's my back. <laughs> you can't see your back. So that means that you need someone to get your back. And if we're trying to do a, a, a mission, if we're trying to have victory, we're trying to go and clear out devils. And listen, you know what happened to the two men that came up to the, to the guy with the devil? Who were you? They came up big and bad. They thought they were powerful in God. And they walked up to take on the devil. And what happened to them? They got beat down and naked. Beat their clothes right up. That devil said, I don't know you. I know Paul. Him I know. I know these other guys, but you I don't know. And I could take you out any day. That devil was not afraid. That devil was not uncomfortable. That devil wasn't nervous. See, that guy didn't have anybody getting his back. He was on his own. So I'm here to tell you that we need that repentance so that we can do the things that we need to do that God is going to call us to do. You know, if we're too, listen, we're not a baby church no more. If we're too busy worrying about our own repentance all the time, how in the world are we going to start reaching out to help others? Well, we still need that help. We need to get to the place where we're like, man, I, that, that's, that's taken care of in my life. I got some power now. Now I'm ready to go whoop up over some devils so that when you come around, they go, oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. What did they do when Jesus came around? The minute he came on, listen, you ever heard these exorcisms and all this foolishness and oh, the power of Christ compels you. Come, oh, holy water. And all that. And the Jesus, get out. In the name of Jesus. And I'll tell that person, you tell them to get out. 
That's it. Because Jesus didn't do all this fighting with devils. Jesus came on the scene and went, ah! There wasn't no fight. The first, don't hurt us. Because they knew there was no fight. They knew who they were coming up against. They had no ability to come up against God. As soon as he came on the scene, ah! Get me out of here! Because they knew they could not win. That's what needs to happen when we come around, church. Oh, Sister Timothy, forget it. Come on, guys, let's go. Oh, Rochelle Thelma now. Oh, here comes Arturo. I'm getting out of here. Susie, please don't, don't hurt us. That's how we need to, if I didn't say your name, don't get mad. Just, just be one of those people. That must be boring. <laughs> Praise God, there should not be a fight, but if we're not repented, we're on that team. We walk up and we don't even know it. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. I'm here to tell you, church, that we have access to that power. We have access to that power. But it starts with repentance. We got a clean house. That's how revival started in this time with Hezekiah. He came out and said, look, go clean up the church. Go fix it up. Now, now we need to do some work. We need to get the priest. We need to get him in there. And we need to clean up and get all the filth out of this place. I need some warriors. I'm not just looking to fight. I'm looking to have war. Yes. Yes. I need some warriors that can go out and fight. And fight like just effortlessly taking out the enemy. Not worrying about anything. Just going into battle without fear and without favor. With the power in God to do whatever is required of you. And even if you get wounded, oh, that hurt. But you know what? I'm not done fighting. I'm ready to take it off. Oh, I might, catch a, I might catch a wound here or there. But I got the grand physician. So all I got to go is go see the doctor and I'll be all right. That is the road to revival. We got a clean house. The, the, the battle starts with us once. And, and I'm calling the church to make sure that you yourself are going to do what we're talking about because we're getting ready to take this on the road. When I put what we had on this morning on, online and Brother Menegos couldn't be there today, but when he sees it, I don't think he's going to be displeased. Going from four to 55 in two services. A four and a half if your niece counts. We had revival there this morning. There was power. Some of you had more revival there than here. You don't know if you're tired out. I'm going to have to get condition you guys to be able to do two services. Because I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to take it on. I, listen, I enjoy being there. Listen, there is comfort in coming here at 1 o'clock, sleep in, watch a little church in the morning, come in here, do a little choir practice, bang on the drum for a little while. Oh, it's comfortable. But guess what? It's time to get out of our comfort zone. I'm not looking to just stay comfortable. I'm looking to have revival. And I look, I'm looking to be on the move. And you can't be on the move while you're sitting still. It's time to build a foundation on the reservation. Well, you're going to hear that one again. You're going to hear that one again. The Lord spoke to you. Foundation on the reservation foundation in the Lord and that's one of the things we're going to do when we're down there we're going to build a foundation they've already started we're going to add to the foundation and build from there praise God I'm here to tell you I'm ready to get out of my comfort zone you think my wife wants to play twice in the morning or once in the morning when I, she's comfortable we got two years we've been we got a nice system going go home get out of church about three four o'clock go get something to eat 
Or if we were broke now, we go home and eat. We used to go out and eat every Sunday, but now it's cook something on the grill or something. Go home, relax, you know. Get ready and start converting the video and maybe, you know, Blockbuster done closed. We don't watch videos no more. I, I got to I gotta be careful what I pray for. I told the church, I watch too many videos. Blockbuster closed down. <laughs> but we were comfortable. This is not comfortable. My, my wife has to change her schedule. I've got to change mine. And, but I'm telling you what. It's time to take it on the road. It's time to watch God. Listen, we've got too much power to keep it at home. We got too much anointing to just keep it at home. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't have it here, but we got too much for it to be right here. See, that's egocentric. We're just going to be right here. No, we need to let this thing spread. We need to let it spread like a virus. Forget about getting sick. How about getting healthy in the Lord? First thing you got to do is get the filthiness out. We got to stay repentant. We got to repent and, and maintain a level of repentance in our life. Verse 6 says, for our fathers have trespassed. And done that which is evil in the eyes of the Lord. That's what I don't want to hear. Babe. That's, that's what I don't want to hear from the enemy. I'm sorry, from God. You have done that which is evil. We're going to hear about what the idea of the Bible talks about when people keep going back to that evil. And I'm telling you something, church. It's never good. I don't care how well the enemy tries to serve it up on a platter. It's never, ever good to go back to the evil ways and out of the ways of God. Continue in verse 6, it says, And has forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs. I'll tell you what, when you need God to get your back, you can't turn your back on him. It says the habitation of the Lord. That means to live with God. To be inhabited with him every single day. Verse 7 says, And they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor burnt offerings in the holy place of God of Israel. They, listen, they stop doing the things of God. What we did today is, is doing something that are in the things of God. What we're going to do Friday night is things of God. What we're going to do Saturday afternoon is things of God. What we're going to do Sunday morning is things of God. What we're going to do Sunday afternoon is things of God. And as long as we maintain doing things of God, man, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you what, today was just the beginning. Today was just the, you've got to understand church. When we broke ground today, it's going to get out. It's going to get out what's happening in Tohatchee. That was just us having fun. What I want to see is the revival that comes from people hearing about what's going on, coming into the house of the Lord, and repenting of their sins, and cleaning house. That is going to bring revival. Mm, my goodness. Praise. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a step of faith here. Because I know what we're capable of. I know what we're capable of. If I could get you to see the power that you really have, man, there would be just all kinds of craziness going on. And what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to begin to demonstrate what God can do when we will step out in faith. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise God. Verse 8 says, Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them into trouble, astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. 
I'm telling you, people have this vision of God that's all just lovey-dovey. Oh, he just loves us so much. Well, he does. But you are able, listen to me close. If you don't hear anything else today, listen to what I'm about to say. You have the ability to kindle the wrath of the Lord. Judah and Jerusalem were the chosen children of God. They were the Israelites. He loved them just as much as he loves us. Yes, he loves us. Oh, isn't it wonderful how much God loves me? Yes, he does. But can you be angry with someone that you love? I love my kids, but mm, I love my wife, but boy, some of those days, I love my brother, but this morning, I'll tell you, later. you were just being 20 something. That's all. It wasn't serious. I love people, but that don't mean that I can't be angry with them. God loves you, but we can, can listen, listen to what I'm saying to you. We can make him angry. And I'm telling you something. You do not want to make the Lord angry. It's not going to be a good thing. He has infinite, ultimate power. And he has the ability to let some things happen that he would have protected you from when you were living for him. We do not want to be turning our backs on God because it says he has delivered them unto trouble. The same God that we believe does miracles and healings has the ability to cause some trouble for you. Oh, nobody likes that. Oh, nobody shouts for that. I don't hear no clapping for that. But that's real. That is real. He has the ability to cause us trouble and let us go through things until we figure it out. Verse 9 says, For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and daughters and our wives are in the capacity for this. Verse 10, Now it is with my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. You ready for the good news? Yeah. I don't want to just leave you sad and, and, and fearful. You ready for the good news? The good news is we can make a covenant with the Lord so that he would turn his wrath away from us. The first covenant we make is to repent. That is a covenant you make with him. I am going to turn from my sin. That is my promise to you. That is my, that is my covenant. That is my deal. I am going to do as you say and turn from my sin. Then we make a covenant with him by doing what he says and being baptized in Jesus name for remission of sins. And then you seal the pact like blood brothers where they used to tap each other with a pen. And, oh we're blood brothers. See the, the way God does that is he fills you with his spirit. And you begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And then you have made a covenant with Him. Now if you go back to your sin, you have broken. You have broken that covenant. So what do you do? Just run and cry? Go take your life? Just run in the streets? Go to drugs? Go to drinking? If you have broken that covenant like they do, what do you do? You repent and make a covenant with God. God, I am going to walk with you. And if you'll do that, the Lord will turn his fierce wrath away from you. That's good news. I don't know why you ain't clapping for that because I'd be excited. I don't want the Lord not to be upset. I don't want the Lord to stay angry with me. Verse 11 says, My sons, be not, be, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. I want everybody to look at me right now. Be not negligent. This is a pastor's job. Be not negligent. Stand before the Lord because he picked you. This is my job to teach to you right now. Stand before the Lord and don't be negligent. Because he is going to use you 
to serve him. Do you understand? Be not negligent. If you are negligent with God, you could have the wrath of God come upon you. Now that shouldn't scare you because if you've made a decision, listen, that don't mean nothing to me because I'm going to live for God. All that stuff that could come upon me, I don't have to worry about because I am going to live for God. Verse 17, I'm going to jump down some. And you can read the rest on your own between 11 and 17. We're almost done. Verse 17 says, Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify. And on the eighth day of the month came they to porch the Lord, to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. And on the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end. So they did exactly what the Lord said. They burnt their incense. They cleaned up the house. They got the filthiness out. They burned all kinds of stuff up that was being worshipped onto Baal. They got rid of the priests of Baal. They got rid of everything they needed to get rid of because they were tired of having the wrath of God upon them. Verse 18 says, and Then they went into Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord. And the altar of burnt offerings with all the vessels thereof and the, and the showbread table with all the vessels thereof. It cleaned up everything. Listen church, who wants to see revival in Gallup? Raise your hand. Who wants to see revival in Tohatchee and pulling in people from all of, let me tell you something. I, was, I did a wedding on Friday night and we're going to see them in here pretty soon. And I, I'm going to tell you something that disturbed me. i got to share this before I continue. I'm going to tell you something that disturbed me. There was a man from Texas in there. And I'm not, I didn't see it advertised anywhere, but I guess he advertised something. And they were at the Johnson? Johnson's? Howard Johnson's. <laughs> they were at the Johnson's house. They were at the Howard Johnson's, and I was up at the little foyer doing the, 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 the wedding, and I heard preaching, so... I was waiting for the bride to come and everything. So I went down in there. There's like 200 Navajos in there. Well, don't clap yet because I'm mad. 200 Navajos in there are, are, are probably a mixture of some other people too, but it's mostly Navajo. And they're all from the reservation. This guy is not from around here. He's going to come in and preach and leave. These people are going to go back to the reservation. And where's their walk with God? And a lot of these people go, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to talk about this next week too. But They come off the reservation, go to church, maybe once or twice a month, go back, drop $50 to $100 in a plate, and think that they're buying their way into God. That's not going to happen, church. I got frustrated because I'm looking at these 200 people going, these people need to be in church, not in a service once a quarter, once every three months. I, I got my, I said, baby, I'm a, what are those cards I gave you? I just gave my wife a bunch of cards to put in her wallet. I said, give me those cards back. She goes, what's she going to do? I'm, I'm going to lay them out right here. She goes, no, you're not. I said, <laughs> I took those cards. I started laying them on the outside of the foyer all over. I said, spread them on. I put them, well, let me go down here too. And I put some cards. I took the ones out of my wallet and put them all out. They don't need to just come in someplace, have some guy tickle in their ear and send them home. And they, and they can seat 200? Man, I can fit 200 in here. We'll bring them to Tohatchee if that's what we got to do. They need to be someplace regular. They need to be someplace every week getting the word of God, not forsaking the assembly of themselves together in love. They don't need just somebody to come in and out. Oh, you ready for this? That's not intimacy. That's a one night stand. I'm not interested in a one night stand with God. I want a marriage. I want a daily relationship. I want to speak to him. And I want him speaking to me. I don't want to just have a fling. Ooh, boy, don't get me preaching. We got way too much casual stuff going on with the Lord. We are too casual. No, I'm, I'm glad there's, there was people there for a day, but I'm not, I'm interested in more than that. I'm interested in taking people from A to B and from B to C and C to D and then go out and reach other people. We can't just be going to church for 10 minutes every once in a while here and there. We need to have a relationship with the house of God. 
Mm, man, I was mad. 200. I walked in. I almost started handing my cards right in there. He going back to Texas. These people staying here. Whose church they going to? Oh, man, don't get me started. Let me just, let me just, you can see my wrath is kindled against this situation. I'm going to be all right, though, because you know what we're going to do? We're just going to go win souls. That's one of the reasons why I'm feeling this burden for the reservation. That's why I believe that God has brought us to Tohachi to help out in this situation. I'm ready. Can you turn the heat back on? Because my wife's chilly. Would you just flip, flip the switch? Verse 28, we're going down just a little bit more. You can read the rest on your own. I expect you to be reading your Bibles and I don't expect you to trust me. Write down notes about what I'm talking about. Go back and read it for yourself and make sure it's saying what I'm saying. Verse 28 says, and all the congregation worshipped. That's, boy, you want to talk about some revival? You got a bunch of people who saw a dirty house of God. Who saw a place that had no respect for God. And a man of God, King Hezekiah, a man who's going to listen to the word of God, listen to God, and say, it's time that we fix this problem. A leader came in and said, we're going to clean up this house of God. I'm going to tell you right now, this place, this building has been uh, uninhabited for some time. Several ministers have come in and out. I don't remember the last time this church had a church, had a pastor, or a consistent ministry for over two years. And I'm here to tell you, we're just getting started. We came in here, we cleaned up and said, we're going to teach a doctrine that's true. We're going to teach power. We're going to baptize people in Jesus' name. People are going to get the Holy Ghost. And we're going to keep teaching truth to whoever wants to be blessed of God. And we're going to start giving people some power by leading them to the truth. Sister this morning testified about how the enemy is trying to get her. Listen, he can't touch you. We give that enemy way too much power. You grab on to that thing that's greater than you, that's inside of you, that's greater than the world. You hold on to that. Devil don't have a chance against you. Devil doesn't have a chance. But you know what you needed today? You know what you needed, sister? You needed somebody to tell you that. That's what preaching's for. You need someone to say, hey, you don't have to worry. You got a God. You got somebody who's got your back and you need to know you're going to be all right. That's what people need to hear is that there is a God in heaven and he is ready to fight your battles. I don't know my Lord ever lost a battle. So if he's got on your team, what you worried about? God never lost a fight. <laughs> he never lost a fight. Praise God. It says, all the congregation worshipped, and the singers sang, and the trumpets, trumpeters trumpeted sounds, and this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Verse 29, and when they had made an end of the offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. One of our roads to worship is cleaning up the house of God. Let me tell you something. I feel something happened in this church when we started fixing stuff. We fixed the bathroom. We fixed the other bathroom. We fixed the kitchen. We're doing some painting. We fixed the front door. Walls were painted. People start to take this serious. We care about the house of God. We're in this place and we need to clean it out. So what's the first thing we do? Is we bring people and we preach them repentance and get the sin out. Get the sin out. You know what that does? That cleans up the house of the Lord. And it starts repentance. Baby, if you'd come. I just want us to spend some time in prayer. We got to pray for each other. We got to pray for Tohatchee. We got to pray for Gala. That should take us a little bit all in itself. We got our own families. We got the families of the church. And we got the families in Tohatchee. And we got those that are lost in Gallup. We need to all reach out for. There's all these people on the reservation that we need to, to pray for to come. I mean, they travel all over. The, but they'll come, if they'll come off the reservation to go to a revival at, at, at Howard Johnson's, why can't they come to church? 
I'm, I've got some ideas for Tohatchee. I'm telling you, woo, there, boy, brother, many go. Don't let me go. Don't let me loose. We're going to do some things that's going to bring people. I told her, you better get some more chairs. You better get some more chairs. I'll tell you what, the Navajo people are beautiful people, and there's a lot of hurting people out there on the reservation. Mm -hmm. Suffering, confused, hurting. Amen. And they'd love to have some of this that you have. They'd love to have some of this of what you have. And don't you dare keep it to yourself. Okay. Don't you dare keep it for That's a punishment that you don't want to see if you'll just keep it to yourself. Winning souls is a salvation issue. These altars are open right now. You can start coming. The music will come. Our, our, our singing and our, and our worship and our love for God, that's music in his ears. If you've already cleaned up your house, you need to come up here and thank the Lord. We got some praying to do now. We, we've got to reach out with our souls and our spirits. I'm ready for revival. I'm not ready for just the revival we're having here at New Hope. I'm ready for an extended revival. I know God is able. He has enough power. He has enough Holy Ghost for every Navajo on the Navajo Nation. And more. We got to start now in prayer. The power of prayer is going to overcome evil and wickedness. We're on the road to revival. In Jesus' name.